Minister, Patricia Gibson. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sir David. Um, and I'm very pleased to have been involved in a debate where there has been so much consensus because it doesn't happen very often. And I want to thank the Honourable Lady from Swansea East who yeah, has yeah. done a power of work on this issue and continues okay. to champion this cause. Um, and I think we would all um, recognise that. Um, I also want to thank um, Consumer Organisation Witch for providing us with an excellent briefing, as did Electrical Safety First. The Office for Product Safety and Standards is, of course, welcome, as we've heard today from a number of people. And it's important as a way of strengthening our product safety regime and ensure that customers know and, importantly, can have confidence in an effective system in place if products need to be repaired or replaced, as the Honourable Member for Poplar and Limehouse pointed out. But caution is required in terms of what impact this will have. The BIS Select Committee report regretted the government's limited response and lack of urgency in taking forward recommendations to address product safety issues and found that Reductions in funding for both local trading standards and national trading bodies were having the kind of negative impact on the adequacy of the existing system that one would expect on product safety in the UK. This, combined with the fragmentation of the current system, makes it difficult for consumers to have confidence in consistent enforcement of required standards across the UK. And we've heard today, uh, Mr Chair, of the recent examples of the manufacturer Whirlpool's response to a defect in its tumble dryers, which clearly shows the limitations of the existing system. Indeed, as a direct result of its slow response, there are still a million homes potentially with dangerous appliances. As the Honourable Member for Leeds West pointed out, the Honourable Member for Merthyr Tydfil and Rimini, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and the Honourable Member for Hammersmith, um, who has set out for us the dangers um, which have dogged those consumers who have these machines, and he himself, of course, has been a great champion in this area. There is no doubt that progress on improving the safety of electrical goods has been too slow, and I think, I suspect the Minister would probably um, agree with that in his um, quieter moments. And this has been despite a, a widely supported set of recommendations made by Lynn Fallswood's independent review, which was published nearly two years ago. Her review concluded that National Product Safety Agency a national product safety agency as its central recommendation was needed to address a long, a long due overhaul of the entire system. So everybody in the chamber, Mr Chair, welcomes this uh, new Office for Product Safety and Standards. But it must have, as we've heard, it must have sufficient scope and resources to deal with issues arising around product safety across the UK. I will indeed. Do not wish, despite what I'm about to say, to introduce a tone of discord, but I was distressed last week when, in the Scottish Parliament, our First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, regard, answered a question from Miles Briggs about the genuinely raised concerns about the safety of baby boxes, in terms of babies being permitted to sleep in baby boxes. Uh, the, the response he got did not tell me that the First Minister shared any kind of genuine feeling for the fact that people sincerely are concerned about product safety in relation to baby boxes. To answer that question, which is a bit left field, but I'm quite happy to take it head on. Uh, if the honourable gentleman wishes to Google the Cot Death Trust, he will find that the Cot Death, Death Trust also has no concerns about baby boxes. I will say, though, that if you do set cardboard alight, it does go on fire. So there's a revelation for you. Um, I think the trick, Mr Chair, is not to set, is not to light matches around um, cardboard. I think that's probably the safest thing for your baby. Uh, the body, as I was saying, um, uh, the, the, the product for safety and standards must be given sufficient scope and resources to deal with the issues arising around product safety. The body must be independent with real teeth to protect consumers and prevent dangerous products from doing them harm. And the consumer organisation which, and the Minister I think will be interested to hear this, the consumer organisation which has expressed some concern and disappointment that the full overhaul and fundamental reform needed that will stop unsafe goods from reaching or remaining in our homes um, doesn't appear to be um, present or on the table. 
Disappointingly, Witch has said that the, the new office has not engaged with consumer organisations such as Witch, which I'm sure he would agree are, are of some standing and calibre. And I wonder why that is, and I wonder how um, consumers would view um, this lack of engagement and what it might mean when, a, when an organisation with, uh, with that status um, cannot seem to get the office to engage with it. So maybe that's something that he could unblock. It does seem a missed opportunity for the Office of Product Safety and Standards. It apparently will not address um, the systematic weaknesses of the info um, existing enforcement framework as has been set out by which. Um, it seems there is no action plan for the new office, and I, know, I can tell them that which have expended considerable effort in trying to elicit some action plan, but without success. But this matter is fairly straightforward insofar as we all know that there are and have been ongoing failures in the product safety system, and recent product safety issues have brought into even greater focus the questions on the adequacy of the current regulatory and enforcement system in the UK relating to such safety. We know there are concerns that there will be a lack of effective coordination and direction in the new office, and if there is no regulatory enforcement staffing resource in local authorities, then that might be a big problem, I think. We know how under pressure trading standards officers are locally, um, so they, they are, their role is extremely important when we're talking about safety in our communities. This office must also consider as part of its strategy product recall, as we've heard. Um, product recall has an average success rate of only 20%, and uh, the Honourable Member for Markerfield and the Honourable Member for Hampstead and Kilburn pointed that out, and that shows by itself that there are millions of unsafe <coughs> products potentially remaining in unsuspecting homes. It needs to consider online retail, which must be held to the fully legal, full legal standards of other forms of retail shopping and product safety, as the Honourable Member for Markerfield and Merthyr Tidfil also pointed out. The issue of counterfeit goods is a huge one, and we need to see a way forward as to how this can be countered. Data collection and sharing in product safety is fragmented and incomplete, um, as the Honourable Member for Hampstead and Kilburn also pointed out. We need a true picture of the scale of the problem of unsafe goods. Um, there's also an injury database which could be used to help collect intelligence and help to quickly identify dangerous products, which I think would be a very positive step forward. There is an opportunity here to address the current weaknesses in the system and make sure that it's fit for purpose in the potentially more diverse trading environment the UK will be part of in, in years to come, as the Honourable Member for Hull West and Hessel set out. Um, there is an opportunity also to introduce a new national independent regime for product safety that ensures effective enforcement, market surveillance and appropriate standards for goods. As the Honourable Member for Strangford has reminded us, getting product safety wrong will cost lives and has cost us lives. Of course, the post-Brexit world raises challenges as well. We cannot have a situation where the UK diverges significantly from the rest of the EU, which could only be to the detriment of consumers, and I hope the Minister is able to reassure us on that point. We all agree that this new office is welcome, but we also all have concerns that it has the power, resource and strategic direction to help achieve what we all want, a safe environment for our consumers who buy products in good faith and have a right to expect that they are safe.